Hey, what's up guys? My name is Steve. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'm just an American guy on a journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Today we're going to be reacting to how did the counties of England get their names? I've been wanting to check this video out for a while. Um, while I don't know many of the different county names in England, the ones I have seen seem to be pretty interesting names and I'm guessing there's quite a bit of history behind those names. And not to mention a lot of the place names in America are actually originally from Britain. And, um, you know, I've always wondered, you know, why these places have the particular names that they do. Um, so this should be pretty interesting. Let's go ahead and check it out. Support Name Explained on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. We've explained many, many times how exactly the nation of the United Kingdom works. It's split over two main land masses, the island of Great Britain and part of the island of Ireland. And across these two land masses, the United Kingdom splits into four smaller nations, England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. However, things can of course break down even further as these four home nations split, like many countries, into counties. It's the counties of just one of these nations we will be looking into today those being the counties of the biggest and most populated home nation of the United Kingdom, my home nation of England. England is made up of 48 counties by some counts. 48 counties. All right, cool. That's good to know. Um, and so I'm guessing England has the most counties of all the four countries in the UK. Um, I wonder how, how many counties does the rest of the uh, nations have in there? Um, my home state actually has a hundred counties. So, um, yeah, that's just a fun fact. <laughs> anyway and each seems to have its own cultural identity and image and their names are perhaps one of England's biggest export. The names of these counties pop up all over languages in the names of certain foods like the Cornish pasty and Cumberland sausage to breeds of dog like the Staffordshire Bull Terrier and of course these names are used as names in other parts of the world like the US state of New Hampshire. Even if you aren't from England and have never been here it's likely many of these names will ring a bell in your brain. These counties also vary from huge expanses of land wow. to just singular cities in their greater areas. So today, let's look into how the counties of England got their names, and hopefully one day in the future we can look into the counties of Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland too. However, just to make things clear, what counties am I covering exactly? As I said, I aim to tackle 48 counties, but by some counts there are more and less. It's because these county borders differ depending on circumstances and many other things. I'm focusing on the ceremonial counties, which were formalised in 1997, as these are the traditional counties of England most people have heard of. They 1997? Wow, that is so recent. What was going on before that? that is that the first time the county lines were, you know, kind of officially drawn up and said, hey, these are what the counties are, period, the end? Or is that, am I missing something there? Today, though, many of these counties are split into smaller patches, like how Devon is the ceremonial county, but in reality, it's governed as three counties, Devon, Plymouth, and Torbay. It's huh. a minor detail, but I know some of you in the comments will want to point it out. And speaking of Devon, let's start just west of that county, in the deep southwest of England, with Cornwall. This county has a wow. very strong, unique identity, even with their own language, and the name is thought to come from that language, with the name of a tribe that once lived here, the Cornovi. This name name is thought to mean horn people hmm. due to Cornwall's horn-like shape. And as mentioned, we oh, have Devon okay. Cornwall's east, known for its beaches and Dartmoor. The name is too thought to come from the Celtic natives, the Dumoni, whose name is thought to relate to the deep valleys of Devon. Okay. Northeast of Devon, we have Somerset, a place best known for oh, wow. its cider and the village of Cheddar, which yes, the cheese is named after. The name says really? the season of huh. summer for a good reason, as it comes from Old English and means the people who live at Somerton, with Somerton being a settlement there. This settlement's name is thought to mean summer settlement, hence why it relates to the season. The city of Bristol and its surrounding towns is actually a county unto itself. Bristol is a famous city, wow. known for being the birthplace of Blackbeard, Clifton Suspension Bridge, Skins, and Ardman Animation. The name does actually relate to bridges, thought to mean the meeting place by the bridge, in relation to the many bridges across the River Avon. Going back south, however, southeast of Devon, we have Dorset, another seaside county. It's the pebble 
pebbles of one of its beaches as to where the name is thought to possibly come from. It may be from Britonic and mean place with fist sized pebbles, which are very big pebbles indeed. And it's from here that we run into a word forming element you're going to be sick of by the end of this video, Shire. From my calculations, 24 of these 48 county names end with Shire. That's wow. half of them. In fact, sometimes the counties of England are known as the Shires of England, and it's a word that inspired Tolkien to name the realm of the hobbits the Shire. This is an old English term and simply means things like province slash stewardship slash district, so it's no surprise to see it pop up so much. A lot of the time the part that precedes Shire in these county names relates to a major settlement in that county, so apologies if I get a little repetitive with these. The first Shire we come across is a Wiltshire, the home of Stonehenge. Mm. Wiltshire is named after the town of Wilton in the county, which in turn comes from the River Wiley that goes through the county. There I cannot tell you how many names in Woodshire in the US as well. There's a bunch of them. You know, New Hampshire is probably one of the more famous ones, I guess, but um, there's quite a few counties, I believe, that are as well. Then we have Berkshire, which the internet tells me is known for sheep, which simply means hilly place. And below Berkshire, we have Hampshire, home of the historic cities of Southampton and Portsmouth. And the hamp in Hampshire comes from the hamp in Southampton, with Hampton popping up often in England and means a water meadow. Mo okay, so that has me wondering if the state of New Hampshire, you know, maybe was, it came, the, the people who named it were originally settlers from that county. That, I bet that I bet that's right. I bet that's what happened there. Moving away from Shires for a moment, we have the Isle of Wight, England's only entirely island-based county. Wow. There's a few ideas as to where this name comes from, but the most popular theory is that it relates to lifting slash raising, as the island is raised out of the sea. And east of Hampshire and the Isle of Wight, back onto the mainland, we have Sussex, which is actually split into the two counties of East and hmm. West Sussex. East Sussex is the famous city of Brighton, and West Sussex has, well, me. This name relates to Britain's ancient residents of the Saxons, who came from northern Germany slash Denmark. It simply uh. means the land of the South Saxons. And there used to be a land of West Saxons too with Wessex. And we still have a land of East Saxons, which we'll cover in a moment. And further southeast in England, we have Kent, famous for Dover and its white cliffs. Wow. As this is the part of England closest to Europe, it has a name of Roman slash Greek roots, though it's thought to ultimately derive from an old British Celtic word, meaning coastal district due to its location. Moving west of Kent, we have Surrey. Potheads will know this county as the likely home of the fictional Little Whingin, where Harry Potter himself lives. Surrey simply means a southerly district, as it's south of the most famous place in the UK, London. And as for London, it's split into two counties. The city of London is its ancient core, and Greater London and its surrounding boroughs like Croydon in the south and Enfield in the north. We don't know where exactly the name- I'm glad I watched those videos about the quote unquote, secret city of London, you know, the city of London, because I would have had no clue what he was talking about if I hadn't have seen those videos. London comes from, but there's a range of ideas from being named after an ancient king called Lud to it coming from ancient Celtic words meaning wide flowing river. By the way, is that, you know, I, I've seen River Avon quite a bit in different videos now. Um, is this River Avon or, um, or is this just a different river? Because the River Avon seems to be a very popular river, a very important river in England. I mean, uh, at least based off the videos I've seen so far. In relation to the Thames, as for why one of these counties has a city of attached to it and why the other has greater attached to it, I'm sure you can figure out. And as mentioned, we have the land of the East Saxons, that is with Essex. UK TV fans will know this county for Gavin and Stacey, and the reality show which states that Essex is in fact the only way. This isn't the case however, as west of Essex, we come back to the Shires with Hertfordshire. This county is named after the settlement of Hertford, with this name meaning crossing for deer. A heart is an old name for a stag, and a ford is a part of a river low enough to cross. And as for Buckinghamshire, this too comes from the town of Buckingham. 
Birmingham, with this town's name wow. Birmingham, like in Hampton meaning water meadow, and the former part is thought to come from an ancient landowner called Booker. And yes, it was the oh. Duke of Buckingham who the Queen's primary dig was named in honour of. Oxfordshire, the county, is once again named after the city of Oxford, most known for its university, of course, and this is a pretty easy one to figure out, especially as we've already covered Hartford. If Hartford was a forward slash crossing for heart slash deer, then it should come as no surprise that Oxford is a forward slash crossing for oxen. The Gloucester in Gloucestershire comes from a town yet again, and it's thought to mean bright place, though what was so bright about it, I'm not too sure. But some think this bright relates to bright in the clever sense of the word, not in the well-lit sense. And just north of here hmm. on the Welsh border is Herefordshire, named after the town of Hereford. We have yet another crossing, but for Hera, a Hera is an old term for formation of soldiers, so the name means soldier crossing. We're still carrying on with shires, with Worcestershire, most famous for their source and its tricky pronunciation. No kidding, that's where Worcestershire, uh, I can't even pronounce that properly, Worc Worcestershire, Worcestershire, I've never been able to pronounce that sauce properly. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, <laughs> Worcestershire. Anyway, uh, I had no clue. That's where that sauce comes from. Okay, good to know. You know, we marinate a lot of stuff with, with that sauce. Once again, it's named after a town, that being Worcester, which is believed to come Worcester. from the name of a tribe who once lived there. Like Oxford, Warwickshire is too well known for its highly regarded university in the town of Warwick, with Warwick meaning dwelling by the weir, with a weir being a small man-made dam in a river. And then we have Northamptonshire, once again we have Hampton, which means water meadow. So here we have a northern water meadow, which went on to be the name of a city, which went on to be the name of a county. Bedfordshire is named after the market town of Bedford, which once again relates to a ford crossing and possibly an old Saxon sheaf of this land called a bidder, not an actual crossing for actual beds I'm afraid. And Cambridgeshire to its east is named after Cambridge, which is too known for its university. The bridge in Cambridge relates to an actual bridge, that being a bridge over the river Cam. The Cam Bridge. This is incredibly logical etymology. We can take a brief break from Shires, luckily, with Norfolk and Suffolk. These names simply mean Norfolk and the South Folk, which are two incredibly simple to understand. Wow. And then we okay. Have yeah. The smallest county, Rutland. No one actually knows what happens here. The name is thought to possibly wow. mean Rotor's land, with a lot of being an old chief in the land. Their name is thought to possibly mean cheerful slash bright, which is unexpectedly pleasant. Back to the Shires, I'm afraid, however, as west of Rutland is Leicestershire, home of the unexpected underdogs of the Premier League a few years back. The county is named after the city of Leicester. This is the first time we have spotted the Cester slash Chester suffix. This means town, but specifically a Roman town. So oh. the city's name is thought to mean a Roman okay. town by the River Ligor, which is thought to be a former oh. name of the River Saw. Next up, we have the dullest name county the West Midlands, named so due to being the west of the Midlands. However, it's full of popular cities such as Birmingham, Coventry, and Wolverhampton. And to the north of the West Midlands, we have Staffordshire, popular for their dog breed. Here we have yet another ford, with the former part of this name meaning riverbank slash shore. As for Shropshire, this too is named after a settlement, though that settlement is now called Shrewsbury, with Shrewsbury thought to mean the fortified place in the scrub. Cheshire is named after the city of Chester, in a Roman, mentioned, old Roman town. A Roman town. Hmm. Why Lewis Good to know. named his books cat after this county, however, I'm not too sure. Derbyshire is named after the place of Derby, which comes from an old English and means a deer village. Robin Hood's in Nottinghamshire ah. is named after the city of Nottingham, which means home. By the way, is is that based off a true story, Robin Hood? You know, everybody knows that. Uh, is it, I don't know if they want to call it fairy tale or whatnot, but, uh, you know, Every kid is basically read, you know, the story of, of Robin Hood when, you know, they're little. Is that based off some sort of real life, uh, you know, event or a real life person? I would definitely like to uh, look into that if that is the case. Homestead of Snot People, with Snot being a former chief here. Not the most pleasant name, I'm sure we can all agree. <laughs> and Lincolnshire is named after the city of Lincoln, which is a Latin name coming from a word meaning pool slash lake. Apologies for whizzing through all these shires just then. They're just starting to make my head spin. Though the biggest shire is of course wow, Yorkshire. That's a big county. The York part of this name comes from the city of York and is thought to mean yew tree estate. Wow. Yorkshire is so large that it's actually split into four counties. Ah, okay. 
actually called North, West and South Yorkshire. The East Yorkshire is actually called the East Riding of Yorkshire. The other parts of Yorkshire are known as ridings too, but the word isn't present in their official names. Riding is a term of Viking origin and simply means a third part, as historically Yorkshire was split into three of these ridings. It makes sense for the word to be of Viking roots as Yorkshire really was the hub of the Viking conquest of Britain. Next up we have the county of Greater Manchester, which contains perhaps the second most well-known city in England outside of London, Manchester. Yeah. The greater part relates to the wider area, but Manchester itself is actually thought to mean breast-like hill, due to the shape of hills in the mm. area. I feel like more people should be talking about this. West of Greater Manchester we have Merseyside, which contains another famous English city, Liverpool, home of the Beatles of course. The county's name comes from the River Mersey, with the name Mersey meaning Boundary River, maybe because it's so close to the Welsh border. And we have one final shire, Lancashire, which is named after the city of Lancaster, that I recognize from Mersey. town on the River Loon. Continuing up north, we have Cumbria, the northwesternmost point of England. And we actually have an entire video about this name somewhere on the channel. This is actually a Celtic name, and means Land of the Cumley, the people who live there. This relates closely to the Welsh name for Wales, Cumley, as they are both Britonic words meaning fellow countrymen. Eastern hmm. Cumbria we have County Durham. This is named after the town of Durham in the county, and the name simply means a city on a hill, as wow. it is well a city on a hill. And above Durham is the county of Tyne and Ware, which contains most noticeably the wonderful city of Newcastle upon Tyne. This county is simply named after the two rivers that run through it, the Tyne and the Ware. And finally, we reach England's northernmost point, Northumberland. This name is pretty darn simple, especially once you know there's a river called the Humber nearby. This name simply means the place north of the river Humber. And there you have it, from Cornwall and its horn people, Manchester and its not safe for work hills, and the many, many shires. This has been a journey across my home nation of England, and how its counties got their names. Thank you to all my patrons who support- Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, that was really interesting. You know, I for some reason, I do. I, I, I know a ton of those names and don't know how. You know, I'm guessing I've just seen parts of their names in different areas in America. And I probably somehow came across those state names from time to time. And uh, I mean, those county names from time to time. and don't know why. Um, but this was interesting. I obviously there's no way I'm going to remember all that. But, you know, now I know a few things that I will 100% remember, you know, um, you know, Chester being originally Roman towns and, you know, down here named for the Horn people. And then you got half the counties in Woodshire and, you know, some some interesting little facts like that. And I think videos like this, although, you know, I, there's no reason that I really need to memorize why each county's named for what it is. I think seeing videos like this that Otherwise, are things that I, you know, it's not really going to, it's not really something that I necessarily have to know on this journey, but it just broadens the knowledge I have and it leads to me being able to understand future videos on a deeper level, you know, because when they talk about a certain county, I'm more likely to know where it's at and things like that. So that's kind of what I got from this video. Um, you know, I'll probably go back through this video again and, um, and just kind of see if I can pick up a little bit more from it. Um, but one thing I want to say is this, another thing that I really appreciated about this video was the fact that every county showed a beautiful image from that county. And, you know, I already knew England was a beautiful place, but my goodness, every county just has, it's just amazing how beautiful this land is. And, uh, I so look forward to visiting, you know, the UK and Ireland, uh, you know, soon as possible. Um, you know, it's probably still going to be a ways off uh, to be able to do that. But um, but my goodness, I, I look forward to exploring some of these amazing places. And uh, so, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please click that like button. Feel free to leave your suggestions or your comments about this video in the comment section. And um also, please subscribe to continue to follow me on my journey to learn about my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys.
Peace.